the hardware sale at Sears. Winnipeg leads Vancouver 2-zip in the second. The loser goes home. Time for us to go. I'm seeing the Boeing next. Bye. Hi. Sports Center is brought to you by the great taste of Diet Pepsi. You got the right one, baby. Aha. Uh -huh. And by durable weather beater paint. Only at Sears, the home of America's craftsmen. We're the Bud Girls, and we hope everyone's at home where they should be at this time of night. Watching bowling on ESPN. ESPN and the Professional Bowlers Association present the championship round finals of the $55,000 Pacific Cal Bowl Senior PBA Open. Now let's preview tonight's top five finalists. Starting in the number five position is last week's runner-up from Abilene, Texas, Robert Gibbs. His opponent in our opening match, making his first appearance in the championship round, is Jim Brenner of LeClaire, Iowa. The winner of that opening test will then face the 1989 PBA Senior Player of the Year, Jimmy Certain from Huntsville, Alabama. Starting from the runner-up position is two-time senior winner from Lake Jackson, Texas, John Handigard. While waiting in the wings to bowl just one game for his first senior PBA championship is the hottest newcomer on the senior tour, Gene Stuss of Allen Hart, Michigan. Welcome to beautiful remodeled Cal Bowl, located in Lakewood, California, for tonight's championship round finals of the $55,000 Pacific Cal Bowl Senior PBA Open. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Durbin. Denny Schreiner is on assignment this week, so I'm pinch hitting for him. And joining me as a PBA and ABC Hall of Famer, in fact, a bowler that many consider the greatest of all time. In fact, if I were to list all of his accomplishments, it would probably take our whole hour and a half show, Dick Weber. Welcome to ESPN, Dick. Well, thank you very much, Mike. It's a pleasure being with ESPN and also yourself. Well, Dick, let's get right to our top five. In the number five position is Robert Gibbs. He throws that big, wide, sweeping hook. Is that big hook a decided advantage for him on the senior tour? Well, first of all, Mike, it is an advantage. Second of all, I had the good fortune of crossing with Robert Gibbs, and he uses a lot of area. The only problem is he has to watch that he doesn't hit the ball too hard. He wants to keep it soft in lifting the ball and getting it over the foul line. Let's go on to the number four position. Jim Brenner of LeClaire, Iowa, seems to have a game just tailor-made for synthetic lanes. He certainly does, Mike. Tailor-made is the correct words, but he has to watch his footwork. If he gets too fast, he's all over the lane, so he has to make sure that he keeps a slow approach to that foul line because he is a stroker. In the number three position, the 1989 PBA Senior Player of the Year, Jimmy Certain. But, Dick, really, when Jimmy was on the national tour, he was more or less a journeyman pro. Why has he become a star since he's become a senior? Well, first of all, Mike, I think he's the most loose bowler out here, most relaxed bowler out here on the senior tour. That creates a little more room, a little more freedom in that arm swing, and he uses that to an advantage because he can bank the gutter uh, like they're going to play tonight. So I look for Jimmy to be very, very tough. Okay, you say he's very, very loose, but in that number two position, we have John Handigard, who's very, very intense. <laughs> have you ever met anyone that's more intense than John? I certainly have not. He's the most mechanical, cautious bowler I've ever seen. In fact, he works so hard on his game the only thing that he works on is getting the ball over the foul line but not uplifting with the ball which creates a lot of loft and he doesn't want that let's look at our number one position gene stuss since he's come on the senior tour he finished 10th two weeks ago last week he's fourth this week he's leading the whole ball of wax dick just how good is this guy mike it's it's an unknown right at the time but he has a tremendous start this year his strength might overcome his talent. He has to watch it that he doesn't throw too hard, too fast, because that'll cause a, a little pull, maybe a, a little a slide on the ball more than he wants. So he has to watch his strength because he is a very, very strong bowler. So that's our top five. We'll see how it unfolds tonight. We'll be back with our opening match in just a moment. The championship round finals of the $55,000 Pacific Cow Bowl Senior PBA Open are being brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you, friends know when to say when. We'll be back with our opening match featuring a very confident Robert Gibbs taking on smooth-stroking James Brenner. Don't go away. Born of 
the finest natural ingredients, then brewed and aged with extra care for that clean, crisp, cold taste. The taste only Budweiser can deliver. The king of beers. The total number of cheese puffs that you've eaten during championship wrestling and church picnics would add up to one profound puff. But you still wouldn't have a taste as big as these little Gino's pizza rolls. A tremendous taste of zesty pizza and a hot little bite-sized snack. A taste so big, it makes cheese puffs seem a little flat. Mm. Gino's pizza rolls, the pizza way to snack. Some men would rather live their lives sheltered in the harbor. And some would rather sail into life with the unmistakable scent of Old Spice. Clean, true, and classic. Old Spice, one of the legends of the sea. Who can you trust these days to take care of your car when it starts shaking? Or pulling, or rattling. Or squeaking. For suspension or alignment, nobody beats Midas. I worry about something I can't see. What your eyes can't see, our state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment will show you. You'll get a written estimate before we start. No surprises. Whatever the problem, we keep it from getting bigger. For alignment shocks or struts, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. Hi, everybody. Championship pair here at Cal Bowl is lanes 21 and 2, and Robert Gibbs is about to throw his first shot on lane 21. It's well over the foul line. And a little bit high, leaves a 3 6 10. Well, a little interesting, and he's practiced watching him uh, ball, Mike. He used three different bowling balls at the time. He thought he was lined up, and then all of a sudden, something happened. He used a, a, a red ball, he used a blue ball, and then he used the black ball. Lane seemed to be hooking a little bit more tonight than they did all week, don't they? Exactly, think? exactly. Tough spare. At the 3 6 10. And sneaks it in there. Dick, you bowled on this pair this week. It was a very high-scoring pair. Do you remember what you shot on? Well, we won't go into that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> now you get a look at Jim Brenner. Very smooth-stroking bowler. Five steps. And kind of a typical first TV shot, Dick, a little pull in that yes. ball there. Being the first time on national TV, uh, you have to be a little tentative, a little nervous, and uh, uh, that long extension, he just pulled it a little bit. He does have nice long arms. I'm envious of those arms right away. He certainly does. You notice one thing, though. He takes five steps compared to Robert Gibbs' four steps, and he stands approximately the same distance from the foul line that Robert Gibbs does. Well, that's why bowling is so interesting. <laughs> All of us can do it different ways, right? Isn't that the truth? Cross lane at the 6'10". And no trouble. I'm sure he feels a little bit easier getting that spare under his belt. Tell you, that first mark really helps. Here, five-step delivery. Standing 12, 13 feet away. Pushing away the first step. Good knee bend all the way. Shoulder high, a little higher than shoulder high. Good extension, but right at the release, he pulls the ball a little bit. Causing the ball to go a little bit high on the head pin. Better stroke there. Yeah. And it didn't make it, the 2458. Little inside his spot. Well, that uh, sends fear in your eyes right away. I mean, 3610 and then the adjustment, and it's 2458. <laughs> <laughs> Not an easy spare at all, Mike. I think the bowlers, uh, I think Jim will throw a, a, a fairly soft at this uh, spare, but uh, a little more direct, move inside a little bit instead of playing the outside angle. Is that your game plan, or do you throw harder at those spares? I, I throw extremely hard. I think most of the bowlers do. Well, the five pin uh, <laughs> fell, not the way he planned, but it still fell. 
because he's much, much farther inside that he, the ball will go around on the third arrow. And ooh, just gets away. From it's the almost chop. like that back pin got the fire. <laughs> Robert, there we are. We have our first strike of the match. One thing about both these players, they, neither one of them uh, wastes much time. No, they're they're very fast on the approach, and I, yeah, in a way, I think that's good because they never, they don't get tense, so tense that way. Now, uh, are you speaking to yourself there? I've noticed as you've gotten older that uh, you take a little bit more time as you've gotten older. Well, I used to be a jackrabbit going up there. <laughs> I think age made me slow down a little bit. For the double. There. He's there. Oh, pretty shot there. Oh, yes. Very much so. I had the good fortune, of, and like I say, I had the good fortune of crossing with Robert Gibson. And uh, he showed me a lot. Works on his game hard. Well, his last four games last night, he shot 250, 250, 270, and then 220. So uh, he made a big charge. You didn't hear that ball hit the lane at all. It was so smooth, Dick. There's nothing like feeling good when you get that first strike on national TV your first time. Really struck the ball well. Well, he's down 14 pins. He needs a strike here to cut that lead of Robert Gibbs down to just four. Interesting thing about this gentleman, uh, Jim Brenner. He broke both of his wrists uh, when he, uh, by playing basketball in high school. After high school, he started bowling. That's what made him take up bowling? Yes. Oh, right. pretty shot there. Interesting how that happens with a number of players. I think Earl Anthony had some kind of uh, physical disability that made him take up bowling. Certainly does. He gets the ball over well over, over the foul line here, around the seventh board. Solid po pocket strike. Did you ever play the game, Dick, where you, you got a strike and all 10 pins went in the pitch and got two points? And if you just got a strike, as Robert Gibbs does right there, it was only one point. And, and when you didn't strike, it was minus two. <laughs> Certainly did. Here's Robert Gibbs, four-step delivery, push away, first step, gets that ball down quick in the backswing, shoulder high backswing, good knee bend, good knee bend. Gets the ball well over the foul line, good lift. Well, I can see that his problem, though, would be coming up too soon and making that ball go left of target. problem right now, is he? There he got one over the foul line and stood up on that shot a little bit. Got by with it. Look, look there, he sprung up a little bit. Too quick, but got by with it. And you have to have those kind of errors to make good. He's looking at the 10 all the way. <laughs> yeah. Watch out, Jim. Oh, oh set. my goodness sakes, it's set all the way. Oh, these guys weren't striking like this in practice. Hey, maybe this is going to reversal here. <laughs> well, we're going back and forth. Uh, seven strikes now, the last seven shots. Jim needs one more to cut that lead down to just four pins. shot. Good shot all the way. Beautiful. Well, as we're going to go to break, Jim Brenner is just down four pins, working on a four-bagger. We'll see if the strikes keep coming. We went to the fight capital of the world and asked the fans, who's the greatest heavyweight ever? By far, it's Muhammad Ali. Ripping punches. Muhammad Ali. Who's the heavyweight champion of the world? Sports Illustrated presents Muhammad Ali, the video. It's free with your paid subscription to SI. It brought back memories, things I'd seen and hadn't seen. Sonny Lister, Palmavino, God's former Joe Frazier. He felt like a butterfly and sting like a bee. And the Muhammad Ali video is free. Now, how can it be free? It's free when you subscribe to Sports Illustrated. Save over 50% off the cover price. Kind of like Muhammad Ali, it gives you everything. You'll get 23 issues, including the baseball preview and the swimsuit issue for three monthly installments of only $9.89. Or you can pay by credit card. This is Ali and his very best. People who never had seen Ali would love this tape. You can't walk away from this tape without being a Muhammad Ali fan. I'll hurt it. I'll hurt it. You're not that great. Call our toll-free number now and get knockout savings on Sports Illustrated and get the Muhammad Ali video free. I shook up the world! 
Pity the rims in this high-flying slam fest where you can choose the winner right from your own home. The College Slam Dunk and Three-Point Championship, Sunday night at 8 Eastern, live on ESPN. As we look at Robert Gibbs working on four strikes, Dick Weber had a chance to ask him earlier if he was satisfied with his performance on the senior tour. Okay, Dick, uh, you asked me whether I was satisfied with uh, what I've done so far on the senior tour. And uh, at first, whenever I first come out, well, I, I was successful in Fort Pierce and uh, Las Vegas. and. Uh, I thought it was going to be pretty easy. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I went in kind of a slump after that and didn't make any more shows until uh, last week. And uh, I bowled good last week and good this week. Uh, one reason, though, that I, I didn't come out on the tour before the senior tour is uh, I always had a job and I had to stay home and make money to live on. But I, I really enjoyed uh, the senior tour and uh, I hope to continue. Definitely going to enjoy it if he keeps striking like that, <laughs> isn't he? He certainly is, and that's that area we, we were talking about, Mike. He, he has created a lot of area, and he takes advantage of it. Has that uh, Texas drawl, doesn't it? Sure <laughs> does, sure does. <laughs> Abilene, Texas. Working on five in a row, up by 14, and bump it back up to 24 with one more. Like a Dick Weber hit there. Uh, Come on. Four, ten. No, it's a Pete Weber hit, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Dick Weber doesn't go anything like that anymore. Here's the replay of it. And watch the ball. It's a little bit high, but he but he kicks. Oh, he kicks the four out with the two pin. And here, Jim Brenner, his first time on TV, working on four in a row, and he's trailing by 24 pins. Oh, these guys are really wired in, Mike. He says, uh, Who's nervous about being on TV? <laughs> I thought you told me he, earlier that he was nervous today, Dick. Can you remember your first time on TV? Oh, yeah, I bowled Burton. He shot 240. I mean, I shot 160. <laughs> <laughs> he played one arrow, laying the gutter, the other arrow, laying the fourth arrow, and I was intimidated. <laughs> I don't remember if I finished the game or not my first time. <laughs> All right, Jim Bennett Brenner working on a five-bagger. Good shot all the way. Oh. You know, it just wasn't in the fault in the execution. That ball just came in a little bit behind the head pin or, and left that 10, as will happen so many times. The, the soft 10, the soft 10. The ball's coming in. Just leaves that half 10. Watch what? this six pin sit in the gutter. This, ah, oh, kick it. It tried to get out there and yeah. get it, didn't it? <laughs> Looks familiar, doesn't it, Dick? <laughs> Shot again. Ten pins. And it's dead in the face. Boy, he's bowling a great game, and he's down 14 pins. 50 yes. pins. One thing you don't want to do, though, you don't want to get too, too confident. You want to keep that desire. That. Too confident, maybe? Too confident, yeah. yeah. Through the heart, leaves only the three and the six. Let's see if he switches balls again to shoot the spare, which he is. Why is he doing that, Dick? Well, he, to use a harder shell ball, you want the ball to slide down and not hook, because the more hook you throw at a spare, like the three six we have up, uh, you have a tendency to chop the ball. So, so in other words, it's better to throw the ball straight at oh, the spares. Definitely so. Covers well. Covers well. I think you mentioned a while ago, Mike, that, uh, that he has a tendency to, to rush the foul line, to get up too fast and not really think he's shot through. And then come up, when he comes up at that line, then the ball goes left just like it did there. Exactly. His lead is only 13. Working on 248, could strike out for 268. Same thing, leaving only the three pin this time. A couple good breaks. They get the nose twice and no splits. It certainly was. He could have had a, the baby split the 310 with that shot there. He reared up the foul line, as you mentioned many times. Cross 
Cross lane at the three pin. And no trouble. This is the first ball that the Euros in. Just pulled it in way inside its target. Never got the ball way out to the to the uh, gutter area. And uh, with a pull like that, you're bound to hit the uh, the head pin. Full. Smooth. Oh, picking the four. Boy, they're doing it like clockwork, aren't they? Both of them can do it. Key shot for Jim Brenner, too. He's that foundation frame, as we call it. Strike 10, strike out for 255, and force Bob Gibbs to get the double and nine. We could have a possible tie, even. Wouldn't that be something to shoot 250 your first time on TV <laughs> and lose? <laughs> Made the shot. The ball slammed. Yeah, it just doesn't. Uh, did that a couple times on the left lane. There's Fran looking on. Uh, not really confident in what Jim's doing here. Yeah, he needed that first one in the tenth. Down 12 pins. Strike there would have really put some pressure on Mr. Gibbs. Well, he wants to make the spare mic and then count well because that'll force uh, Bob G uh, Robert Gibbs to uh, mark. No trouble. An excellent first game for his first time on television. Comes out, bowls a clean game with a strike. He's going to finish with 235. He's going to have uh, a possible seven strikes, you know, and yet he's staring at a loss. How can you be happy when you lose with 235? Though? Well, you can't be happy, no, but I mean, he has to be at least pleased with his performance. Of course, he hasn't lost yet. That's true. How many times have you needed a mark? And well, I know that. Oh, I have many, anyway. many times. <laughs> All right, that's a good count for 235. Remember what Robert Gibbs did the last two times. Now he reared at the foul line, hitting the head pin full. Needs that mark. Gave it more room. <laughs> Trusted it when he needed it. Strike here has another possible 250. Two more strikes, 257. Robert Gibbs, the winner. Slid a little bit, leaves the uh, two pin. Gonna finish up with 247. With the spare conversion. Excellent bowling, 240 to 230. This is a harder ball and makes a spare for 247. No trouble there. So Robert Gibbs defeats Jim Brenner, 247 to 235. We'll return to Cal Bowl, and I'll have this week's installment of Average Builder after these messages. If you added up all the potato chips you've eaten during poker nights and playoff games, you'd end up with some serious fuds. But you still wouldn't have a taste as big as these little Gino pizza rolls. Ooh, a tremendous taste of zesty pizza and a hot little bite-sized snack. A taste so big, it makes ordinary chips seem like small potatoes. Gino's pizza rolls, the pizza way to snack. Mm. When your office is 200,000 acres of rugged woodland, and you train the men who prevent anything from happening to it, you can't depend on just any deodorant. Men count on Old Spice deodorant. It works to prevent odor, to neutralize it before it starts. There's nothing else this effective with the clean, classic scent of Old Spice. I had to dip your... You bet. Old Spice deodorant, because prevention is the ultimate form of protection. Count on it. Average Builders are brought to you by Pizza Hut and their new MVP four-topping pizza. On tonight's telecast, all five of our finalists 
are using the outside angle, which means that somewhere down the lane, their ball is getting right of the first arrow. And that's what I'd like to talk about tonight. How do we and how do you learn to play that critical outside angle? Well, I have four suggestions that might help you. The first one deals with where do I stand? And where I stand depends really on how much I hook the bowling ball. If I'm like Robert Gibbs, who hooks the ball quite a bit, I want to move maybe a little bit further left and belly the ball out. If I'm like John Handigard, who throws the ball straighter, I might want to move further right and go more direct at the pocket. In this particular bowling center, I'm standing on the 13th board to play this angle. Which brings me to my second point, and that is, where do we aim? Well, remember this when you're picking out a target. The first arrow is the fifth board. And of course, the gutter is always there looming at us. So I recommend that you pick somewhere in the middle. Right in the middle is the third board. So as you're learning this new angle, try the third board until you really get comfortable with it. Which brings me to my third point. What type of shot do I throw? Well, you want to throw your natural, normal shot unless you throw a backup ball or a reverse hook. Remember, the idea of playing outside is that we think the lane is going to help bring the ball into the pocket and afford me that tremendous carry that that outside angle can give me. And the last point is, well, how do I overcome my natural fear of throwing the ball in the channel? Well, there's really only one way to do that, and that is to practice, practice, and practice some more. And then try that angle in your league bowling and tournament bowling when the lane condition calls for it. But remember this, if you make a board or two mistake to the right playing that angle, the ball is probably going to go into the channel, as has happened to many of our star players on the national tour this year. Well, I'm going to try and put theory into practice right now. So I'll set myself up right here on the 13th board. And remember, my target is the third board. And here goes the shot. Remember, move to the right, use that third board as your target, throw your natural normal shot, and don't let that channel intimidate you. We'll see you again next summer when we'll have more Average Builders. Robert Gibbs is going to move on, and he'll face Jimmy Certain when we return to the PBA Senior Tour on ESPN. During the Final Four, Pizza Hut brings four of your favorite toppings together on one great pizza. Introducing the new MVP pizza, made with pepperoni, mushrooms, Italian sausage, and green peppers. Get this winning combination for $7.99 and a second for just $4 more in delivery and carry out only. So fast break to Pizza Hut because the new MVP pizza won't be around for long. Pizza Hut, make it great. Welcome to Mountain Man 101. Let's begin. This is a mountain man. Notice his love of great natural beauty, his instinctive resourcefulness, his healthy respect for a fine pair of cowboy boots. However, the easiest way to identify a mountain man is to look at his hands, which will no doubt be holding a smooth bush beer or an easy drinking bush light. So head for the mountains and learn to live life as a man among men. If it happens in baseball, you'll see it on ESPN. There he goes. He leaves. He makes the catch. See Tuesday night doubleheaders, Wednesday night excitement, Friday night twin bills, and exclusive Sunday night action. The world champion Reds open it up against the Astros. Nolan Ryan and his golden arm power the Rangers against the Brewers. An opening day doubleheader, Monday, April 8th, live on ESPN. Both bowlers bowling well. Gibbs with a six-bagger, Brenner with a five-bagger. That was the difference in the match, 247 to 235. Gibbs is going to need to keep his striking clothes on, though, against Jimmy Certain. Certainly is, Mike. And Jimmy Certain electing to have Robert Gibbs start on lane 21. Right back in there. <laughs> You know, Dick, in the practice shots, because the back ends of the lane seem so dry, we were seeing several pocket 710s. Uh, do you think there's a chance that we still might see some of those during, before the evening's over? I wouldn't be surprised to see one, Mike, because the ball comes so far back of the head pin that uh, everything misses the 7-pin and the 6-pin misses the uh, 10. So, uh, wouldn't be surprised at all. And 
behind the man in the knickers starts with a strike. <laughs> Jimmy came out and practiced in those knickers, and he's won the hearts of the crowd. They were really behind him here at Lakewood. Certainly has. He gave it the old muscle shot out there and all that. <laughs> he has with to do a, little, do a little sucking to get that muscle shot. <laughs> with his physique, especially. <laughs> of course, uh, I have a little trouble with that protruding belly myself. I'm glad I don't. <laughs> Trying for a quick double. Oh, man. Oh. Now, he is extremely on the left gutter. I've never seen or, Jimmy swing it that far out, have you? No, I've not. On the right gutter, he's just... Robert Gibbs just goes about his business, though. He doesn't seem to pay too much attention to what his opponent's doing. When you're from Texas, nothing bothers you. That's what he says. Tight in the pocket, leaves that four pin. And really haven't been a whole lot of taps. No, there has not. In fact, he pulled the ball way inside his mark, and he can get by with that because he has a spin on the ball that gets through the head real well. Well, Dick, why don't you imitate that spin? <laughs> <laughs> I do, but it goes 62 feet. <laughs> Robert switching balls and covering that spare. Starts with strike and a spare, is down by 10 pins. Jimmy looking on. You see, he's wearing that pink shirt. You know what they, they say about <laughs> pink shirts, don't you? No, go ahead and tell me. They say that the pink pacifies your opponent. Oh, I see. I see. I'll have to remember that. Oh, nice Brooklyn shot. Or maybe that pacifier doesn't work when you cross over. I don't know. <laughs> break for Robert Gibbs as he throws the ball way inside his mark and pulls the ball a little bit. Ball hooking over to the, what we call the Brooklyn side, carrying the five and nine pin out. Did you see him fall off balance to the right there as he threw that shot? A lot of us bowlers have that problem rearing up at the foul line. Jimmy making over $30,000 last year in the senior tour. Just like that, by getting strikes when he needed them. I think he watched your uh, uh, instructions on hitting the third uh, board out there, which you were talking about. And he's hitting the third board, and the, the ball's coming in nice. Of course, he throws a little bit more ball than you do, but uh, that's his point. You had to, had to go ahead and say that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Jimmy trying for four now. And the 10. He gives it a little wave, unfriendly <laughs> wave there. He was hoping that one of them would fall over, but it didn't. There's Jim releasing on the ball. Just stuck a little bit, pulled the ball. And see his foot turn there at the end? Saying, please break yeah. it up. Not afraid to show his uh, emotions. Hard and straight. <laughs> but didn't get out of it cleanly and leaves the 10 pin there. So he's open and suddenly his lead is reduced to less than 10 pins. Six pins to be exact. Robert Gibbs can take advantage of this and take a four pin lead with a strike here. That just pumps you up when you see your opponent open like that, oh, doesn't it? Doesn't it though? Yes, it certainly does. Oh. Will it fall? What pin is that that stood up in the four-pin spot? That's, a, that's the four-pin. Still the four-pin. You think that oil is carrying a little bit down the lane now, Dick, causing the, the little bit of a, a skid and a hook reaction? Watch this. That's the five-pin sitting. Oh, nope, you're right. The four-pin's hit. The oil is carrying down. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Gives a little pat on his heart. <laughs> well, what kind of adjustment do they need to make now as that oil does carry down the lane? Well, you're going to have to open up more or else move to the right a little bit more. You're going to have to move your spot right your, or your footwork right. Well, you crossed with Robert Gibbs. Did he make those kind of adjustments oh, during the week? Yes, and he used different, uh, he used uh, four or five different bowling balls at the time, too. <laughs> just what we were talking about, the old pocket 710. 
The worst break in the world with a 7-10 pocket hit like that. I just can't understand it. What happens on the stick? Where does the five pin go? And where's the head pin go? Well, as you, uh, you as you watch, the five pin goes in front of the seven, the six goes around the uh, ten, and oh goodness sakes, don't give me that. Nine out, so Robert Gibbs is open in the fifth frame. He wasn't happy with the outcome of that, and I I agree with him. Takes a six-pin uh, deficit and makes it a 19-pin lead for Mr. Certain. You don't want to give too many breaks to uh, Jimmy Certain. He'll take advantage of it, that's for sure. He's got a nice line on 22, <laughs> doesn't he? Certainly does. Certainly does. Here, Jimmy Certain, a five-step delivery. Pushing out on the second step, bringing the ball down. Third, shoulder high swing. Good knee bend. Good follow through. All right. I'm envious. I wish I had that. Wish you had what? His hook or his not that follow through? I like your follow through a lot better. I wish I had everything in his. <laughs> the hook, the follow through, everything. But he doesn't have your title. Uh, he's not as lucky. Stuck again, got by with it, and coming in hard. So Jimmy Certain opening up a 29-pin lead. We're going to go to break now and see if Jimmy Certain can get getting strikes just like this. Don't go away. Strength Rolaids Antacid. Stronger because it has more calcium carbonate, more than any Tums tablet, and salt free. More calcium carbonate and salt free. This settles it once and for all. Minutes, no better way to face the day. The morning belongs to Skin Bracer Aftershave. Its cool, brisk tingle really gets you going. And what a great scent. Skin Bracer. No better way to face the day. The total number of cheese puffs that you've eaten during championship wrestling and church picnics would add up to one profound puff. But you still wouldn't have a taste as big as these little Gino's pizza rolls. A tremendous taste of zesty pizza and a hot little bite-sized snack. A taste so big, it makes cheese puffs seem a little flat. Mm. Gino's pizza rolls, the pizza way to snack. Two of the women pro bowlers, Kathy, Kathy McNaughton, the blonde, and uh, Pam Buckner, left-hander from Reno, Nevada. Two great bowlers. Probably enjoying the action here tonight. Saying they wish they could compete against these guys, huh? <laughs> Robert Gibbs now, having had that pocket 7-10, needs to get something started, just like that. Oh, he got a little loose on that shot. He gave a little run back on that. Well, have you ever found that, that during a commercial break that you were able to gather your thoughts and get a little more relaxed and, uh, and make a better shot when you oh, came out of the break? Definitely so. I think all the bowlers uh, uh, like that break because if, they're, if they are going a little bad or have a, a few bad shots, they like to sit down and meditate about their shots. And then it loosens you up. Go after them. Uh, he needs a double badly here. Oh, what a break. Another Brooklyn. He says either side of the headpin works for him, huh? <laughs> there it is again. He pulled the ball inside the mark. He never let the ball go out to the gutter. And carrying that six pin off the wall. My dad used to say, when in doubt, go Brooklyn. I mean... <laughs> All right. Jimmy Certain looked in, looking to increase that lead to 29 pins with a strike here in the seventh frame. A little soft there. Did you see that, Dick? Very much so. Never even went through with the ball good. Never even followed through with the ball good. Now, do you suppose that, that Robert Gibbs' break has something to do with that shot? Could be, uh, Mike. Could be. Look here. Look here. Here comes the ball. See, it was right on line, just too soft. Yes. <laughs> that was like uh, a one-hopper, wasn't it? <laughs> the shortstop there. It did bounce a little bit on the... Uh, Pathfinder lanes here, that's for sure. Well, you talk about throwing hard and straight at spares. Jimmy Certain is certainly an advocate of that. Oh, yeah. 
And and you you gain that here it is right here. He throws, throws the ball exactly as hard as he possibly can. And you learn that from the national tour. And Jimmy's had that experience on the national tour. You don't try to hook the ball to spares. Uh oh. The washout. The one, two, four, ten. Trusted it, but it didn't come back. What would you do here? Move five boards right? Three boards right? That's probably what I would do, but, but what I think he's going to do is throw hard and straight probably down the middle as we take a look at this shot. He really didn't get out of that ball clean. He yep. lifted the ball, overturned the ball, made the ball skid too far. He's on the side of the ball to begin with and kind of went over the top, didn't he? Yeah. Well, we've got a uh, tight match now. A certain shows a little chink in the armor there on lane 21. It's a one-pin match. Robert Gibbs working on a double can take the lead for the first time in the match. No trouble with lane 22. It seems like both bowlers now, Dick, are struggling a little bit on lane 21. Lane 21, right. Uh, certain giving the ball too much room on lane 21. Gibbs, the last two shots, uh, pulling the ball to the uh, nose or to the Brooklyn side. Well, is Robert now going to move because he's been Brooklyn twice on this lane, or will he just try and make a better shot? I would say try to make a better shot, but open up, try to open up a little bit more. He seems a little bit tight on that. Now open up, you mean throw it more to the right? Throw it more to the right. He tried, but it still crept high, leaving only the 4-7, the 10 up there for uh, seemingly forever. Get a good view of it here as that ball goes through the heart of the pins. Oh. Pin came out of the pits and got that 10. Right up. Leaving the 4-7 spare. Better hook. He did. <laughs> Certain trailing by seven pins as we head for uh, crunch time. Actually, Jimmy can strike this thing out and lock up the match if he could get four strikes. A key shot for Jim, sir. What is your mental approach in that ninth frame, Dick? What are you thinking of? Well, I tighten up a little bit and throw the ball a little bit harder and more direct to the uh, to the uh, pocket, making making sure I try to hit the pocket. And he did. He did. Now, do you think his, he hits to lane 21 with that washout in the eighth frame that he's just thinking, I want to get out of this ball cleaner this time, make a better shot in the tenth frame? In my opinion, on, on 22, he lined the ball a little bit more in 22. On 21, he tries to hook the ball for some reason or other more on 21 than he does on 22. Let's see what he does. This one's to take the lead. shot again, didn't he? He sure did, and, and it, it just surprises me with Jim's experience like that, that he would go to a, a hook shot, where on 22, he lined the ball, what we call, down the, down the boards, let the ball break in the pocket. That shot there was rounded a little bit. Well, Robert Gibbs is going to be in that same situation that he was the previous game of needing a mark to win his second match tonight. And he's on his favorite lane, too, 22. That's in his favor. Oh. There's what you were talking about, a little more direct, a little more speed, 10 in a pit. Robert taking a re-rack on lane 22. What is the re-rack rule now, Dick? Uh, as any bowler on, on, uh, in a tournament is allowed two re-racks per game. So Robert uh, Gibbs will have to take his first re-rack. And that has to be the first order of business before, uh, uh, before he gets the re-rack. Did you get a peek at it? Did you see something wrong with it? I didn't see anything. My eyes aren't that good. But sometimes the three, six spreads a little bit. And you say, look, maybe I'm going to leave that 7-10 if I go too wide on the shot. David Room. 
Boy, he could have had the 2-10 or the 2-7. Winds up with only the 2-4. He's left that before in this game. Got quite a break there. You're right, Mike. Got quite a break. He could have had the 2-10, like you say. 2-7, a 2-8. Tough spare. Looked like he just kind of came up again, you know, and didn't get the lift that he wanted. Needs this to win the match. Right straight at it. Needs a spare and got that. And now he needs six pins uh, to uh, win the match. Well, you remember uh, a couple of weeks ago when your son was bowling, the Bill <laughs> Ballard needed seven pins and uh, wound up throwing it in the channel. So nothing's for certain, oh, is it? That's for sure. You think he'll throw it down the center real hard? What do you think? I think he will. I think he will. So he's normal shot and gets seven. <laughs> Ooh, just enough. Oh. For Robert Gibbs, 200 even. Jimmy Certain's 198. A tight match, but Gibbs comes out on top. He's going to move on. We'll return. We'll show you some more of other people who made money this week on the PBA Senior Tour. We went to the fight capital of the world and asked the fans, who's the greatest heavyweight ever? By far, it's Muhammad Ali. Ripping punches. Muhammad Ali. Who's the heavyweight champion of the world? Sports Illustrated presents Muhammad Ali, the video. It's free with your paid subscription to SI. It brought back memories, things I'd seen and hadn't seen. Got it, let's look. Palomino. God's former. Joe Frazier. He felt like a butterfly and sting like a bee. And the Muhammad Ali video is free. Now, how can it be free? It's free when you subscribe to Sports Illustrated. Save over 50% off the cover price. Kind of like Muhammad Ali, it gives you everything. You'll get 23 issues, including the baseball preview and the swimsuit issue for three monthly installments of only $9.89. Or you can pay by credit card. This is Ali and his very best. People who never had seen Ali would love this tape. You can't walk away from this tape without being a Muhammad Ali fan. I'll hurt it. Call our toll-free number now and get knockout savings on Sports Illustrated and get the Muhammad Ali video free. I still got the wall! Bob Perry just missed a super senior. He bowled pretty good. Dave Sutar, Hall of Famer. Bill Johnson, $1,600 for eighth place. And Tommy Evans, all the way from Florida, ninth place. Tita back in the finals, and Tom Carbone in his second consecutive final. And here's left-hander local bowler Doug Johnson and John Arcina, our bowler of the year, 1990. Delano Booth in his first finals, and Hall of Famer Don Johnson. And here's Rich Holden, another left-hander against Paul Koppel. Koppel. <laughs> Walt Block, Les Zykes. And Bill DeWitt, a newcomer on the tour, Ron Hoppy from Kent, Washington. Hey, hey, I know that oh. guy. I know him. Archie Carter finished 23rd. And last but not least, a great guy, Marty Perrano. Still running him out at age 68. Certainly is. Certainly is. Well, we get a look at the field here. We had 143 players. Average to cash, 199. Make the finals, 205. Or... Yeah, that's right. Average to make the finals. Take a look at some of the high games here that we have. Jimmy with 289. Ray Fleck. There's a new name. I haven't heard that one. Alan Choder, left-hander, champion. And Don Johnson with 280. Well, we're going to go to break as Robert Gibbs has defeated Jimmy Certain. He's going to go on to meet John Handyguard in the semifinal match of the Pacific Cowboy Senior PBA Open. Evander Holyfield, would you pop a buddy in the mouth for 59 cents? You bet I would. If it's a breakfast buddy from Burger King. Introducing the new breakfast buddy sandwich. Egg, sausage, and cheese all on a buddy's bun for just 59 cents. At that price, who wouldn't pop a buddy? Or two or three. So pop a buddy in the mouth. The new breakfast buddy. A great new breakfast at a price that's a real knockout. Only at Burger King. 59 cents. Even I can't beat that. <laughs> When your office is 200,000 acres of rugged woodland and you train the men who prevent anything from happening to it, you can't depend on just any deodorant. 
men count on Old Spice deodorant. It works to prevent odor, to neutralize it before it starts. There's nothing else this effective with the clean classic scent of Old Spice. I understand the office. You bet. Old Spice deodorant, because prevention is the ultimate form of protection. Count on it. To get rid of her gray, my wife can spend 40 minutes. But I discovered the five-minute hair coloring. The revolutionary discovery called Just for Men from the leader in men's hair coloring. Simply apply Just for Men and in five minutes, shampoo out. Gray is blended away. The look of my natural color is back in five minutes. That was me. And it won't fade or wash out. My hair takes forever, but you look great in just five minutes. The look of your natural color in just five minutes with Just for Men. Sure, I care about this yard, but I care about my family even more. And that's why I only trust ortho products. If I'm having trouble with the bugs, or there are weeds I need to get rid of, there's always an ortho product to do the job perfectly. But best of all, ortho products are so carefully made, they leave the yard looking beautiful, and thus feeling comfortable. You're definitely better off with ortho. Hey, baby, I can't wait. My bags are packed and I'm ready to go, Jimmy. That's right, Dick. Friday through Monday, we'll be with John Saunders along with Bob Lee in Indianapolis with reports from the Final Four on ESPN Sports Center, America's Sports Authority. Proving the old adage that nobody's perfect. We had the wrong graphic up there, but here's the correct one. Robert Gibbs is going to face John Handyguard. The final score of the last match, 200 to 198. Uh, Gibbs kind of outlasted him there. <laughs> he certainly got the break. He, he threw the ball hard and hit the nose, and he could have got the could have got the big five. Well, look at Handy Guard, second, fourth, second, first, and he was first, you know, most of the last round. And then Stuz shot so great, he caught him. Good way to start. Uh, what a disciplined bowler he is, Mike. Very disciplined bowler. Plus, he's a practicer. What it takes. How much do you practice nowadays? Not enough. <laughs> Quick answer. A little more room. Pretty shy. Dick, let me ask you a question. It seems like uh, all of our seniors on tonight's telecast are in their early 50s. Do the, do the guys in their early 50s have a big advantage over guys like you that have approached their early 60s? Well, you know, I've been asked that question many times, Mike, and I think the guys that get over 60, like myself and, and so on, I think we tire a little bit, but we don't omit it. We force ourselves to go through the actions, and, and you can't do that. And I think the 50-year-olds do, do have an advantage a little bit. It's a lot, a big difference than, say, between 61 and 51 than there would be, say, between 35 and 25. Oh, certainly. That's for sure. That's for sure. And, you know, I, uh, not to relate to golf too much, but Arnold Palmer uh, does his exercises every morning and everything, but he can't keep up. And he's 61 also. No trouble with a seven pin. He broke down that pocket 710. We'll take a look at this yeah. now. Watch the right side of your screen. They're both up there, and the six just, uh, as Billy Whaler used to say, the tender touch. I love to tap, right? <laughs> yeah. Same type of hit, but the 10 stood and not the seven. Looks back at his wife, Sue, and uh, says, I just didn't follow through. Just didn't have it. John, John is just never, as Sue looks on, <laughs> John is just never satisfied with his performance. You know? You're exactly right. He, he's so disciplined. He's so critical of himself. It's something else. Cross lane at the 10 pin. No trouble. Take a look at John Hannigard's style. Four-step delivery, pushes away before he takes the first step, gets that ball down quickly into the swing, shoulder high, head still, good knee bend. Oh, beautiful, beautiful shot. That's how you teach your kid, isn't it? Yeah. You didn't teach your kid that way, though. I was unfortunate <laughs> I didn't te teach my kid anything, hardly. 
whatever you taught him. He knows how to win PBA tournaments, that's for sure. He's just got pure talent. John Hennigard leaving the four pin on just a little bit of a high hit. He says, those other guys tripped the four. I wanted to try that. It didn't work for me. You know, John needed to double in the 10th frame last night to lock up the number one seed, and he got the first one and left a solid 10 on the second one. He told me, he says, well, I let it get away from myself. I said, John, you needed a strike to do it, and you left a 10 pin. It's not your fault. Yeah, John Hennigart covering the four pin nicely. You know, Mike, it seems like we're pulling on more and more on synthetic lanes, and we have the Pathfinder lanes here with the aluminum base uh, uh, to it, and uh, what do you think about it? Well, I'm not bowling anymore. How do, you're bowling a lot. Well, how do you uh, like the synthetic I, lanes? I, I really enjoy them. They're good, they're good synthetic. Uh, good. I like them. Do you find that there's a, a overreaction on synthetic lanes? Not necessarily. Uh, it depends on how the proprietor keeps the uh, keeps the condition of the of the lanes. Uh, if he keeps them clean, it's fine. If he doesn't, then you're going to run into trouble. Just like wood lanes, if you don't keep them clean, you're going to run into trouble. And we should explain that an overreaction is where the ball hooks violently or slides, and uh, the ball doesn't react true. Exactly. Robert Gibbs going for the double, and he does. Wow! Did he snap that ten pin out of there? Well, he finished second last week. He's trying to improve upon this week. Andy Gard finds him down, himself down 11 pins as we head to the fourth frame. A lot more speed on that ball, more direct and a lot more speed. The ball never really got to the pocket. Good. Why did, good roll. why did it leave the 10 pin? Well, it's one of those half hits, and, and his, his ball never really got a, a good roll at the back end, leaving that half 10. What does he do to improve that roll? Um, I think uh, I think uh, if you ask John that, he would say, I want to cut my speed down just a little bit. I got a little a little too anxiety about that, that, that particular shot. Well, we'll see if he can do that on lane 21. John says one thing to me that he says, I don't want to loft that ball on the lane. And so far he has not. But I think he's trying to keep his speed up not to do that. Wipes the uh, dressing off the ball. Taking very little time. Normally John's a pretty deliberate player. <laughs> very relaxed in his stance. There's a slower shot. Slower shot. Oh, oh, solid 10. Yeah, solid 10. Now what do I do? Now what do I do? Once he got one strike and four taps and five frames, and he's saying, uh, why me? <laughs> Spare conversion. He's going to trail by 12 pins and has every ball in the pocket. We've all bowled those games, haven't we, Dick? Yes, we have. You know, a lot of people don't understand that. If you hit the pocket 12 times, you should have 300. Well, you should, shouldn't you? <laughs> Oops. Watch out, John. That was the spare. <laughs> but, you know, uh, to, to go along with that, you know, you can hit, hit the pocket 12 times, like a 300, maybe a 2-0 or a 220 game, whatever, and not hit the pocket all the time and get a 300. Well, Robert Gibbs had a couple of Brooklyn's last game. That's one reason why he's still around. Jimmy Certain's not here. <laughs> Going for the turkey. A little more speed, it looked like that yeah. time, the 2-4-5. Leaving the 2-4-5. Now, how do you think he's going to play this? Do you think he's going to play it straight down in line with the two-pin, or will he move to the right and shoot hard at the square? Well, he's had a chance shooting the 2-4 twice before, so I would think he's going to line up uh, a little bit to the right and hard and straight right at the two-pin. Like he's moved right. Could be trouble. Ooh, he got it over there. <laughs> Robert uses all of the pins, doesn't he? Oh, he certainly does. He's a great guy to cross with. I crossed when I crossed with him. He says, I can't overturn the ball like that. He says, I got to give it a little more lift. I got to do this. I got to do that. He always talks to himself. He talks to his opponents, too. Oh, does he? Really? Yes. Here it comes. Pretty shot right there. Pretty shot. Well, we'll take a look at Robert Gibbs' strike. 
We're going to head to break right now with Robert Gibbs in a 10-pin lead. We'll see if John Handyguard can cut into that lead. We'll be right back. Are you a sports fan? Cash in on your sports knowledge and win $100 instantly by playing the Sports Trivia Hotline. It's fun. It's easy. Call 1-900-990-8888 from any touchstone phone and text your knowledge. Be a winner and call 1-900-990-8888. That's 1-900-990-8888. Win $100 instantly. Point was prohibited. $2 per minute. You must be a ready team to play. Not sponsored or endorsed by ESPN. Doing drugs is like being on top of the world. Everyone says so. Everyone seems to be having one dandy old time. Hey, it's part of growing up. Or is it? Just think about this. Before you go and do something you've never done before, you just better know what you're jumping into. John Handyguard struck in the sixth frame. In the seventh, he left the 310. He's trying to convert it on the outside. No. We take a look at that first shot, Dick. And he really, really got through the ball well and got the hand around. But he, when he got the hand around the ball, he pulled, made a, made a pull a shot out of it. Put himself in a big hole down yes. 22 pins. Robert Gibbs working on the strike. He can really take command of this match. He was running it out, Dick. Yes, he certainly was. He wanted to take advantage of that open. Well, the scores have leveled off since the first match, but they're still very competitive, and everybody's uh, still hitting the pocket. They're just not carrying 10 pins now. You know, Robert Gibbs used five ball bowling balls this week. He said the PBA conditions were different every day. Ooh, just missed it. Just making that 10 pin. See the difference there, 22 pins. And talking about scores, we're going to have Major League Baseball. The Texas Rangers will face the National League East champion Pittsburgh Pirates Saturday, March 30th at 1 Eastern time, live on ESPN. 22-pin lead for Robert Gibbs, bowling in the eighth frame. Will it fall? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Boy, he's had a lot of good breaks, Dick. <laughs> yes, he certainly has. All right, here's the ball hitting real light, just about leaving the two-seven split. But the pin's knocking over the, and rocking the seven pin. At the conversion, no trouble. Now it's time for John Handyguard to really go to work. He's down 22 pins. 21 pins. John Handyguard in his eighth frame. John could still strike it out for 215, but he needs to put some X's up there now. Probably the most important shot of the week coming up for him right now, don't you think, It Dick? certainly is. This is the foundation frame, and he needs this. Watch his hand. See, he gets to the side of that ball that time. Got through good and got the sand on, got the hand around the ball. Six pin kicking out. The 10 pin, and oh, yes. Thank you very much. Crucial shot. Will it carry? Didn't get to the pocket. The two and the eight. Trouble lane for a lot of people. Lane 21 is the one to master tonight. Certainly is. And you know, you hit it right on the head when you said he got around the ball on lane 22, but he never got around on that ball. Got through the ball, but never around. Never got the good lift on the ball. Well, that was the, re the correction probably for the 310 the last time. Now he has a another difficult spare, the 28. Nice cover. You don't win many games without doubles, though. <laughs> Not on the uh, against PBA competition. Robert Gibbs cruising along at a 206 pace. Just needs marks in the ninth and 10th to uh, go on to face the tournament leader, Gene Stuss. Oh, yes. He 
likes that lane, doesn't he? It certainly does. It certainly does. Well, you know, the two previous games, he had a finish on the right lane and got the mark both times. Now he needs a mark again to lock up this uh, semifinal game, but he has to finish on lane 21. That's given the bowlers a little more trouble. And he's had a seven pin count, and he's had a, a, a single pin, two pin count on the uh, on the left lane. Gibbs looking for the mark to lock up the victory. Oh, that's kind, isn't it? That's the best kind to get. You're right. Well, for the second consecutive week, Robert Gibbs is going to bowl for the championship of the PBA senior event. John Hannigarden, not a happy man. He's not happy with himself, really. He knew he bowled a bad game. Robert Gibbs defeats John Handigard. We'll come back and recap tonight's matches and their crucial shots after these messages. One athlete has been on the cover of Sports Illustrated more than any other. A fierce competitor who knew no fear in or out of the ring. I'll fight that chump in a telephone booth. Muhammad Ali, boxing's best. And now you can get the incredible story of this sports legend captured on video free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. You'll get an electrifying look at Muhammad Ali only SI can deliver. Free. I'm the fastest thing on two feet, lad. You'll relive it all, his greatest fights, the guts, and the glory. From gold medal winning triumph at the Olympic Games, on to the starting rope of victory in Zaire over a young champion named George Foreman. Recall the grace, the charm, the showmanship, and the mouth. One more time, who's the tail for the round? Call this toll-free number now and save over 50% off the cover price. Plus, get the Ali video free. You'll see the heated rivalries, including the three brutal confrontations with smoking Joe Frazier, Ali's stunning defeat in Madison Square Garden, up to the thriller in Manila. And a thriller and a killer when I get the gorilla in Manila. Definitely one of his most devastating battles ever. Get 23 issues of SI for three easy monthly installments of $9.89 each. That's over 50% off the cover price. You can put it on your credit card. You'll even get the baseball preview and the 1991 swimsuit issue, revealing the latest trends in beachwear, along with the Muhammad Ali video free. Call now. You'll save big on Sports Illustrated and get the free video that must be the greatest. I'm a bad man. I shook up the world. I shook up the world. Championship Frame is brought to you by Midas. For brakes, shocks, and mufflers, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. In the first match, this is the 10th frame. Robert Gibbs needed a mark. And he throws the ball to the right, like he should do, and he comes back with the strike. How about that? There's his reaction. He moved on to face Jimmy Certain as he uh, defeated James Brenner, 247 to 235. Big scores those first game. In the second match, just as tight, but the score's a little lower. This is the eighth frame, where he took the lead right here. Again, he takes and needs a strike to take the lead, and he does, on the same lane. He likes that right lane, oh, doesn't he, he Dick? certainly does. And winning 200 to 198 over Jimmy Certain. In the third match, he needed a mark in the tenth frame. Had to finish on lane 21 this time. This lane had given him trouble, but... Same old story. He comes back with a solid strike, and that wins the match for him. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, Robert Gibbs is ready to bowl for his second chance at a title. We're going to go to break right now, the championship match featuring Robert Gibbs versus Gene Stuss. Don't go away.
Your car pulls to one side. If your steering wheel is off-center, your car could be out of alignment. At Midas, train professionals with the latest technology align your car right. Midas realigns foreign cars and light trucks, too, the right way. Before your tires show uneven wear, have your alignment checked. Or you could be shortening tire life and taking risks. You see, we're serious about safety. Hey, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. Common misconceptions about the mountain man. Three, that a mountain man's best friend is his horse. Two, that a mountain man only packs a six gun. And one, that a mountain man only has one favorite, beer. Actually, mountain men are known to favor both smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush light. So, head for the mountains and find out how a real mountain man preserves wildlife. Live, top rank boxing on ESPN. The place where fighters have stepped into the ring as unknown, made the right connection, and emerged as champions. You're going to knock them out to win this, all right? Former world champion Steve Cruz is on the long road back to the top. He faces undefeated Rafael Ruelas for the North American featherweight title. It's Championship Sunday on Top Rank Boxing, live on ESPN. Sunday, we're going to have top rank boxing. Rafael Ruiz versus Steve Cruz. 38 knockouts between those two guys, Dick. Uh, that fight not, may not go very long. <laughs> 9 p.m. Eastern time. I think I'll watch that one. I'm glad I'm in I'm my own profession. <laughs> Easier to leave tens and fours than oh, get hit in the head, huh? Yes. <laughs> Gene Stuss has chosen to finish on the right lane. I think that's the intelligent thing. Uh, 21's been the most trouble for the guys. Oh, bad break right off the bat. You're bowling for your first title in a PBA event. You throw a great shot, the first shot, and leave that. Does that unnerve you the rest of the game? Oh, Mike, it, it certainly upsets you. You know, you say, what, why happened to me like that? So what does he have to do? I mean, assuming he doesn't uh, bounce this out of here, it's been made twice, you know, in the past. He'll throw Maybe. hard at it, that's for sure. He's a strong man. But, uh, I don't know, I just, I just can't explain a 7-10 like, hit like that uh, correctly. And it just, it just bothers me when I see a bowler get it. I get once, uh, It's almost one like time. you left it, Dick. <laughs> My 7-10 comes from the nose, Mike. <laughs> Gibbs, that one went oh, pretty straight, Dick. Certainly did. He's, he's got a, he, ha, he creates a great area for himself. Uh, he'll, uh, he'll uh, bend that ball, uh, throw it out to wide, comes back, and uh, he has an instinct uh, feeling, I fe uh, feel. You know, people accused you of that over the years, that you were a great instinct well, player. it's left me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Almost an equally bad break with a solid seven there. So both bowlers throwing the shots excellent and uh, not getting the results that they desired. Robert Gibbs switching balls again to that uh, red ball or pink, whatever it is. He made an excellent shot. There's nothing wrong with the hit. Just uh, one of those bad breaks. That's really what you can claim it to. Well, he came down to the 10th frame last week and needed a strike to win his first title. Now he's uh, he tried to take an early lead, and the 7-pin wouldn't let him do it. You need those breaks to win anything, Mike. Ooh, just about again left the 7-pin. <laughs> Almost back-to-backers here, I'll tell you what. Wow. Nothing That's... funny about that. I, we all know what that feels like when you leave those, and it's just a knife right through your heart. This man is so strong. He does have a tendency to really to rush the foul lane and rear up at the foul lane quite a bit. But uh, what a what a nice fellow. Take a look at Gene's style. Five step delivery. Moving the ball down before the first step. Down on the second step. Shoulder level backswing. Good knee bend. Good knee bend. See looks that like, elbow break there? Looks like he comes across with the hand and the elbow comes out with the Dick Weber chicken wing. 
But he, you know, that was the average builder last week. I used him as the example because he doesn't do that very often. This guy's saying, what's going on? I'm wanting to win the title. What's going on? I've hit the pocket three times and no strikes. And coming in light with uh, power shots and not striking three times in a row. But I noticed that elbow break a little bit again on that shot, Dick. I think that just the pressure of the championship match is making him steer it just a little bit. You're right. Agree with you. One game's hard to bowl out there for the title. How many times did you bowl for the title from the number one position? Very seldom, man. <laughs> Five. Robert Gibbs with the spare up in his second frame. Having a 12-pin lead over Gene Stuss. Pretty shot. Pretty shot. Mm -hmm. He's a very confident bowler right now. You can see it written all over him. It's just uh, no monkey business, no fooling around. Just throw the ball in the pocket and strike. He's a hyper-type guy, too. Oh, is Really he? a hyper-type guy, yeah. Doesn't like to sit down, really. I'm surprised he's sitting down the way he is. But well, they like, make him sit down here <laughs> on the championship format. Likes to move around a little bit. Well, you said it worked over there before. <laughs> There's exactly what he didn't want to do. He really hit that ball hard, and you notice he reared up at the foul line to cause that ball to hook early. Now, what do you mean when you say he hit that ball hard? Well, he hit it hard with the fingers. When he hit it hard with the fingers, he rears up a little bit more at the foul line, and that makes the ball hook early at the head and cross over to the Brooklyn side. And that's what you warned about at the top of the show that he needed to guard against, right? Right over, right over. Well, Gene's had time now to uh, regain his composure, put himself together, and see if he can come up with his first strike of the match in the fourth frame. Two, Two eight. in the eight. Two eight spare. Tough spare. Now, will he shoot this off his strike line more than likely? I would think. I, I would think he would. Uh, and what's the reason that he would do that? Uh, well, he knows the ball is, is going to hook into the 8-pin, so he, he just wants to hit his mark. That's all he wants to do is he'll move a little bit to the right, maybe two or three boards, and hit his mark. Well, he didn't do that. <laughs> what do we know? He made it. <laughs> That's why we're up here, and he's down there. Nothing like being a grandstand manager, is there? Yeah, Monday morning quarterback or whatever, <laughs> all those cliches. Andy Guard couldn't get a double against this guy, and now Gene can't get a double. It may be Robert Gibbs' day. It certainly might be. One thing for sure, these two guys have been the hottest two players on the senior tour these three weeks, and one of them is going to come away with his first senior victory. Right, and both of them finalists last week. Gibbs second, Stuss uh, fourth last week. They're both improving Cole. on that. Well, Gibbs has to win this game to improve on that. On his favorite lane, lane 22. 15 pins ahead. Hits it one more time. Everything falls for Gibbs. You notice that? He doesn't throw any more hook. He throws less hook, really, than uh, Gene Stuss does, but the ball's working good for him, rolling good at the back end. Carrying the... Uh, well, it could Strike. be that he's just a little more relaxed and confident right now than uh, Gene. Maybe a freer arm swing, yeah. Could be. It's amazing how that confidence makes those pins fall over sometimes. <laughs> you should know that very well. Trouble with lane 21 again, leaving the 6 and the 10. He's hit the nose a number of times and been able to break up those splits uh, or get it all the way over to Brooklyn and get the strike or an easy spare. 
Yeah, it looked like he tried to get the ball well over the foul line that time without hitting it, but just reared up. And when he rears up, it, it causes him to lift the ball harder. The ball hooks earlier. At the 6'10". Oh. And the chop. And suddenly we got a very tight match right now. And that's the break that uh, Gene Stuss is looking for. Unfortunate break for, uh, bad break for Robert Gibbs. There's the shot. Clipping the six off the ten. Wouldn't think that you could do it, would you? Oh. Another spare that's very difficult. Three, six, ten. And Gene with an opportunity there to jump all over that open frame by Robert and didn't do it. He thought oh. it was going to be in there and it just snapped right at the back end. <laughs> the shoulders slumped. The, my wife used to say the Donald Duck look. <laughs> Covers it nice. Three, six, ten. Covers it very nice. Dick, how many times in your career did you bowl for a title and, and bowl a game like this where you just really can't take command and you're struggling to get a strike and both players got opens? I mean, I think every bowler's gone through it. I know you've gone through it. I've gone through it. Many other bowlers have gone through it. And you, you just you just keep fighting and fighting and fighting and say, what should I do next? Will it carry? Yes. <laughs> One little thing he did. He slowed his footwork down. He got the ball well over the foul line. Had a nice swing. Nice and, follow through. And the elbow stayed in nice and tight that time. Exactly. Took his time. It's funny what uh, pressure will do to us, isn't it? <laughs> it certainly does. Robert on uh, lane 22, the one he likes. There again. Boy, you can't miss that light hit, can he? What's he going to do on 21 now, Dick? What kind of an adjustment will he try and make? I remember last shot, the last two shots on those lanes. He really reared up the foul lane. I tried to get the ball well over the foul lane and out to his mark, but it just he reared up, pulled the ball, ball so, hooked early. So is he trying to make the adjustment with speed and loft? I think he's going to try to soften up and get a good knee bend. I don't know. <laughs> as long as he keep he it life. He did stay down with the ball a little bit longer. He didn't raise as, as quick as he did the last two shots. Gene down 16 pins in almost a must strike situation here. Elbow broke. Oh! <laughs> you see that elbow steer back? He looked like Carmen Salvino on that show. Watch the elbow. <laughs> the cameraman jerked back a little bit on that one. <laughs> Here comes the ball, and oh, what action. Good action. Another. Elaine brought that one in there. That's why we play that outside line. <laughs> Another key shot for Gene Stuss to take the lead by four pins. Oh, big shot. The seven and the ten were the last ones down, but they went down. Interesting now, Robert Gibbs coming up on his favorite lane, one that he has not missed this game, but now he finds himself trailing by four pins. Will this lane be as easy for him now as it has been before? Well, we'll wait and see, because when you need that strike, things do happen. Oh, and the two, four, five, and eight. Got a little hard. Got the ball well over the foul line, but I don't know. Just didn't make it up. He has not an easy spare, and he has to make this to stay in the match. That's for sure. He's down eight pins now. Great coverage. It's amazing how fast the game of bowling can turn around, Dick. Gene Stuss three frames ago seemed like he was almost out of the match. And now suddenly, Robert Gibbs found himself down eight pins, has to double and get nine in the tenth to take the lead. Uh, Gene Stuss making uh, three good shots, and uh, Robert Gibbs in the last three frames made two good shots, but then that errant shot in the ninth, leaving the bucket. This is an important strike for Robert Gibbs. So with 
the conversion, Robert Gibbs is going to find himself down nine pins, and Gene Stuss is going to need some kind of spare or strike to win his first PBA senior title in only his third tournament that he's bowled. <laughs> Robert Gibbs wants to make sure that he makes this spare, though. No trouble. That forces uh, Gene Stuss to have a mark in the 10th frame. Gene Stuss looking over to score, uh, seeing what the heck goes on here. Yeah, wants to make sure that he's got the score correct. And Robert gets most a good count here, too, Mike. Right. Didn't get it either. Got six. Finishes yeah. with 189. Could be a tie game. A nine pin count. Miss. Correct. Uh, Meyer. Meyer. He needs a mark. He needs a mark. Will it make it? Oh, I'll tell you what, how would you like to shoot the 2A to win your first title? No, thanks. <laughs> and that two pin moved a little bit to the right. right. He's got to make this. He does have to make this. Right. It is off center a little bit where the two pin is a little bit to the right. He made it earlier this game. And he did it again. Hey, perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. <laughs> And Robert Gibbs again losing in the 10th frame. Well, the winner of this match is going to be Gene Stuss. He'll get his trophy in check when we come back. To get rid of her gray, my wife can spend 40 minutes. But I discovered the five-minute hair coloring, the revolutionary discovery called Just for Men from the leader in men's hair coloring. Simply apply Just for Men and in five minutes, shampoo out. Gray is blended away. The look of my natural color is back in five minutes. That was me. And it won't fade or wash out. My hair takes forever, but you look great in just five minutes. The look of your natural color in just five minutes with Just for Men. Always exciting or with something new. Always an adventure or with something to do. Sure, I care about this yard, but I care about my family even more. And that's why I only trust ortho products. If I'm having trouble with the bugs, or there are weeds I need to get rid of, there's always an ortho product to do the job perfectly. But best of all, ortho products are so carefully made, they leave the yard looking beautiful, and us feeling comfortable. You're definitely better off with ortho. There are days when the breezes don't blow, the dogs don't bark, and you can't watch some actress enjoy the first quenching citrus taste of squirt. Come on, lady. Give your thirst a squirt. You could win a trip for two to the Australian Grand Prix or one of hundreds of other great prizes. Just enter the Squirt ESPN Australian Grand Prix sweepstakes and see what it's like to race in the land down under. The championship round finals of the $55,000 Pacific Cowboy Senior PBA Open have been brought to you by Ortho. The quality ortho lawn and garden products are the proud sponsors of ESPN Sports. And by Squirt and Diet Squirt. Give your thirst a squirt. Everyone's cheering for Gene Stuss as he has defeated Robert Gibbs 200 to 189 and won the Pacific Cowboy Senior PBA Open. 
Presenting the check and the trophy is Jay Swerdlow. He's the vice president and general manager of Pacific Theaters. And I'm sure that Gene is very appreciative of that $5,000 and that trophy will find a place on his mantle. Dick, what do you think? Oh, well, I think Gene's stuff really came through greatly in the last three or four frames. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you, Mike. Well, thank you, Dick. For Dick Weber, this is Mike Durbin saying so long from Cal Bowl in Lakewood, California. Tonight concludes the California swing of the PBA Senior Tour. We'll return to ESPN on June 20th from Flint, Michigan. Don't forget, bowling fans, two weeks from tonight, the Ladies Professional Bowling Tour resumes its coverage with the first of eight spring tour events on April 11th, live from Alexandria, Louisiana. And ESPN's coverage of the PBA National Tour begins on Saturday, May 18th, with the Kessler Classic.